So now we're moving on to Betaflight. All USB cords are not created equal. So you've got to remember that. Some are only charging cords, some don't have all the pins pinned out. When you find one that works, and you plug it in, you will get usually a comm show up up here. And then you can connect. So in beta flight, usually the first thing you want to do is calibrate the accelerometer. And once you've got it connected properly and calibrated, moving the drone will let you see it. It'll let you see what the, uh, so that should be nose down, nose up, dude, dude. So that tells us that the board is correctly installed and facing the right direction and everything. Now we move on to the ports. <coughs> <coughs> so UR1, Serial RX, and that is where our receiver is hooked up. So we need to click the R we need to make sure this is clicked. UR3 is where our VTX is hooked up and we need to give it TBS Smart Audio or IRC Tramp as the case may be. UR6 is where our camera is. Give it run cam protocol and then we save and reboot then we sometimes it does not reconnect and we have to connect again now we get to here and this shows us our direction of our props so these quads can be either a feeder or a swimmer. Now there's some people who like one or the other more than the other. In the end there's not a lot of difference. Some people feel that this way throws less stuff in the camera but these things don't really throw a lot in the camera anyways. Now the reason I have this as this is when I went down to the motors and I said I understand the risks. I have no props on of course. Now if I plug it in I can spool up the motors individually. And this one is naturally, there's one, there's two, swimming out. So they're all swimming out. And they are all, just by happenstance, on the right assignment. So, I'll turn that off, I'll unplug this guy. So I just said, well, kind of don't care if it's an in-swimmer or an out-swimmer. Performance-wise, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So I just indicated to the flight controller that the motor direction is reversed and saved and rebooted. So we're doing D-Shot 600. Oh, and if you need to change the... Uh, if you've got one motor that is reversed, you can either swap two of these wires 
any two wires going to the ESC or you can uh, load up BL Heli software and uh, reprogram it in the ESC in flight controller but I don't need to so I'm not going to load that up just um, Joshua Bardwell has wonderful wonderful um, Oscar Liang is another good one they, they have good tutorials on the, on doing that it's not a big deal um, Rotorite Madrib has done some more remapping two videos so we're going to go with 8 and 4 accelerometer we've got no barometer no magnetometer maximum arm angle So we take off the accelerometer so that we can uh, arm if we're upside down, if we're in a tree or something. So let's save that. Connect again. And go back down to configuration. So this is what you would use if you had the board aligned in a different direction. So sometimes you cannot, uh, you don't always want to put the uh, flight controller straight forward. So you can offset it uh, by so many degrees. So uh, let's say if you mounted it on a weird angle or upside down or something for whatever reason in your build. Craft name, FPV camera angle. Now here is where we, uh, we choose an S bus. And then we choose I bus for our controller receiver and then that will give us fly sky on some other on some flight boards there is a jumper that you need to solder once in a while you'll run into it in order to choose S bus or I bus or, or, or a default but I mean it's really just a matter of bridging two little pads on the motherboard but this one doesn't have that <coughs> we'll do air mode we want on to screen display we want dynamic gyro notch filtering sure why not uh, 3d ask no we're not using reversible asks RSSI uh, we don't have uh, an audio setup for our we don't have any audio set up from our receiver, it doesn't have it, so we're not doing GPS. It beeps when TX is turned off, or signal loss, repeat until TX is okay. That's one that I like to turn on. Beeps when auxiliary channel set for beep. So that is what, it's a bypass for a beeper basically, you use your motors for a beeper, so if your like, quad goes down you can Flip a toggle and make your uh, motors beep till you go find your quad. Beep when gyro has been calibrated. I don't know that I care about that one. Beeps when TX is turned off with signal loss. Repeat till TX is okay. Lost lane. Disarming, beeps with disarming the flight controller. Arming, beep with arming, so that's like a single beep. GPS, we can get rid of the GPS ones. When beeps when battery's getting low, that's not bad. Longer, some longer warning beeps. Beeps one auxiliary channel, which is the other side of that one I was talking about before. Completed confirmation, so just individual little beeps here and there. Let's save and reboot. And let's connect again. Pit tuning. <coughs>
anti-gravity. Let's look at our rates. So uh, this is what I put in for rates for a start. <coughs> These rates are a personal preference of the pilot. It's whatever you like. Whatever you, you're used to. We'll try these out. We'll probably end up changing them till we find what we like on this quad. Oscar Liang has a wonderful page on it on the internet. So receiver. These should be the settings that give us input from our controller. So let's look and see. Turn on our controller. Ooh, look at that. We got throttle. We got our rotating knobs. Which we don't have assigned to anything right now. Arm. Keeper. Oh no, we crashed. Where's it going? This I said for something, I can't remember what. But now we can see down on the on the side here. So pitch. Pitch. Or roll, sorry. Roll left, roll right. Nose up, nose down. Throttle up, doesn't show up. Yaw. Now everything looks to be good. Everything looks fine. Now, if we needed to change some things, we would have to go into our controller and change them. Oh, so incidentally, do not set up X1 in your controller, typically. Set it up in the flight controller, because you will lose resolution in your joysticks into the flight controller. So normally you want full resolution into the controller, and then just adjust your X1 and everything there. So we have full control of this quad. We don't need to plug in no more. Now here is where we set our switches to do this and that. So we don't I don't have a fail safe set on this because quite frankly this this is a ranged setup. It there's there's no like uh, oh kick in fail safe and it's got GPS and return to home. There's no GPS on this quad. It's a purely acro. So arm, I've got that set up, and you can adjust your range. So you're as we can see uh, with this little yellow icon here. This is an indicator of where the switch is right now. I just unplugged it, but I could plug it back in for a second and show you. So, you see how it switched to armed? And now we're up at 2000 with the. And then our beeper. See the yellow icon? Oops. And you can move these sliders to set your sensitivity range of where it goes. And when we get down to... Uh, so I've got... Oh yeah, I put pit mode on here. Pit mode for the VTX. And I set it so that middle or... So that's pit, pit mode. So that's, it'll kick it down to 25 milliwatts. And then if you go middle or up, this is a three position switch, it'll be in whatever you've got the VTX set for, for power. 
So that allows you to put it in pit mode manually. <coughs> so if somebody's like, if you're flying with somebody and they're like, oh, you're stomping on me, then you can just kick your VTX into pit mode and then hopefully you're not drowning out their video signal. Now I also put, so I put the beeper and the uh, turtle mode on the same one. And then we're looking at so all those look good. There's a lot of things on screen display disable. I'm not sure why you'd want to disable that on a switch. Black box, FPV angle mix, blackboard arrays, camera, Wi Fi button, camera power button, camera change mode. It's just uh, stuff I don't need. Don't need any of that. So, motors, we, we already did this. We've got all the motors turning the right direction. And in the right order, one, two, three, four. Let's do a little demo. One, two, three, four. Beta flight is happy. The computer knows which one's which. On screen display. Now we can. You just drag and drop these elements around here. So let's put the low voltage closer to the center of the screen. This is the channel of the VTX. So you can put different things in here depending on uh, depending on what crosshairs. Interesting. So yeah, you can put different things in here depending on what you want to see. What helps you fly better. I keep these elements. You can actually change your fonts and stuff and put in custom fonts. And you can put in the... Uh, so, check this out. So if you create a logo of green, black, and white pixels that is 228 by 72 you can actually put your own custom little boot screen in here so when you uh, boot your quad it'll show up in your goggles let's save that OSD I made a tiny little change now so this is a, a wider screen here and if you actually have 4x3 goggles, you can actually cut off some elements, which is why I kind of got it squished to the center. Because my, uh, my, I got just some fat sharks that are 4 3. So if I put the uh, voltage out to the side too far, it uh, cuts it off. Uh, black box, I don't care about that. CLI, so CLI. CLI allows you to put in some uh, different CLI allows you to put in some different settings that aren't in the other and do special configurations and stuff and in here you can even remap motors and stuff so if you need to do that then check out uh, Oscar Liang or Bardwell very smart guys and then that is about it for setting up this thing in beta flight
Look at that. Disarm. It is just about ready to go. The only thing we have left to do is set up our camera properly for what we want and do adjustments on it and choose our VTX powers. So here is our camera adjustments. Set those up. So let's get this out of the way. We can set our camera settings with the little joystick. And then once we're done, we'll unplug that. I like those camera settings just fine, actually. They're fine. And you can see our OSD. We can arm. So our little Martian is basically ready for a test flight here. And that is about it for this project. The end, other than a test flight, but unfortunately Way too freaking cold. Extreme cold warning. Four times a day I get notified of an extreme cold warning. It's a few degrees warmer than it was. It was down to 35. But it's still freaking cold. I've exhausted my build. I guess I'll have to find something else to do until it warms up enough to fly again. But, you know, hopefully this helps some of you in your builds. Helps you figure out how to put together a budget quad so that you can get out and just enjoy. Just send it. Um, as far as durability, this looks like quite a durable frame. Um, the bot grinder frame would be 6 mil arms all in one piece with the bottom plate would be pretty damn solid too I would think. That would be a frame I wouldn't mind flying around. 
basically when you're doing freestyle and stuff like this, unless you're into like serious racing, you don't need to have the optimal everything. You can have a lot of fun. Like I live up here in Canada and when it comes to uh, snowmobiles, you could go out and you could spend 16 grand on the latest, greatest snowmobile. Or you could get an old 19, 1992 Yamaha Phaser and, you know, fix it up. And the bottom line is you were out there with the guys having fun or you weren't. You could go do it or you couldn't. So as far as having DJI and all the latest, greatest, hooja, whatnot, it's not a priority of mine. A priority of mine is just to get out and have fun. And there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information out there that allows you to build stuff for yourself, do for yourself, and just enjoy. Just get out there and enjoy. Get out there and accomplish. The building is an accomplishment. The flying, the learning how to fly is an accomplishment. <coughs> What a lot of people don't realize is that these little freestyle quads and, and racing quads are entirely acro. They're not like the DJIs. You have to be able to pilot them or they crash. If you go at a range of the transmitter, they crash. They, they stay in the sky entirely based on pilot skill. So when they come in with a lot of the rules of where, you know, like, like a lot of the rules say, oh, well, you can't fly within uh, five kilometers of an airport or 1.6 kilometers of a helipad. And it's like, okay, seriously, this thing goes more than 300 meters from me in any direction, up or down or sideways. You know, I lose reception and it crashes. So if I go out into an area where I am... You know, say you find a, a bando out someplace, and you're out standing in the middle of the bando, and it's 300 meters to every fence, you know, or you're out in a field or, or a tree nursery or uh, something like that, where, you know, unless an airplane or helicopter is going to be flying at lower than 300 meters, they're not in danger of getting hit by you. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a mile from an airport, if you're 300 meters from anything valuable that can be hit, you're safe. It's very different with the uh, DJI autonomous GPS-enabled quads that can fly away. And I almost think there should be a difference in the rules based on whether there's GPS and autonomous flight capabilities versus pure acro. I think pure acro machines should have different rules. I mean, the second they lose reception, they fall out of the sky. Without that constant pilot input, they fall out of the sky. But it's a it's a great hobby. It's a lot of fun and you don't have to spend a fortune. So enjoy you guys.